Hey, I'm just going to do a quick tutorial show how to get text out of uh, Blender into a format that HitFilm will consume. There's loads of different ways you could do this. Um, there's really no getting away from the fact that you need to do some fiddling with the text to make it nice, otherwise you're going to end up in problems. So this is one way to do it. As I say, there's loads of others. Um, so it's just the standard Blender install. Um, I've just set everything back to default. So there's a couple of things I'm just going to install. Um, user preferences. Uh, Add-ons. Pie menus. It's just a menu system. I'm used to using it now. Have that. Um, I think that's it for now. I'm going to add any more in as we need them. Okay, so I'm just going to delete the default cube. Add some text. Okay, by default it rolls it down flat. I like it up. So I'm just going to rotate it. 90 degrees on the x-axis. got screencast key going. For, let's see what we're actually doing. Um, and then on the right hand side here, you see here we've got type of data as text. Um, and here's the fonts. If you click on it by default, okay, it's just got the Blender font. And you probably want access to all the, the Windows ones as, as well. Um, so you can either look them up here, or you can actually, if you're going to do it regularly, you can set it up. Um, so let's just set it up, show you quickly. User preferences, system, right. file. And you can see here um, the default, so there's nothing set for fonts. Um, so you can obviously download them yourself um, yeah, or you can set them for the Windows ones so do the Windows where are they now there we go fonts ok put it all in there just save the settings so now when you go to the fonts here to look them up ok you get a list um, I'll just pick one at random just use the default one Okay, yeah, it's quite a good one because there's um, these narrow bits on that are going to cause trouble. So it's really tempting in here to go into the text things here and then you can extrude, uh, bevel, etc. Okay, um, when you convert it to a text object or if you export it, it's going to convert it to a, to a mesh object. Sorry. Um, you're going to cause problems, you're going to get overlapping faces and all that sort of thing. Um, so you're better off... Um, just biting the bullet and sorting out as you go along it's not that difficult uh, so what I like to do so the resolution here um, tells you how fine it is so if you knock it down to zero you can see here that there's less points these are basically curves I think um, so you really want the minimum resolution where it looks nice um, probably six is going to be right we're not going to subsurf it or anything actually I'm going to put it up at back where it was at 12 because we're not going to put any subsurf on um, I'm just going to put it in sort of as it is. So we're going to hit quite high resolution so you get the nice smooth curves. And I'm going to turn the fill off so there's nothing filling it. Okay, so we've just got plain text. Um, so I'm just going to convert that um, into a mesh. Um, okay, tab. And this is the pie menus, they're quite cool. Um, so we're in vertex select at the moment. I need to select everything. Okay. So you can see this is quite dense. We're just going to leave it as it is for now. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use Ngons um, just to fill these gaps because it's going to get triangulated anyway. Um, if I was sort of doing this myself and it really mattered, I'd tidy this up. I'd do a limited dissolve on these, block it all out into quads and do it properly. Um, but yeah, that's not what this is about. Um, I like to do one at a time. So if you just click one of the vertices and then just do Control L, just picks up the linked stuff. Okay, F will fill it. All right, so let's just put an end on in there. Um, so it's just uh, underneath that, it's all going to be triangulated. If you just export that, it's going to look horrible because um, it's got sharp edges on it. We haven't, we haven't done any extrusion. Um, so the best thing to do first is to, in, to do like a small inset around it because um, it helps with like the edges and everything. So if you pick the smallest sort of space there is, hit I for inset. Okay, you can see you have to be so careful. All right, so you can see here that they're overlapping. You can make a right mess of it. Like that. Right. So just be subtle. <laughs> so if you hold down Shift as you do it, it gives you smaller increments. Okay, so you want sort of as much inset as you can, but without overlapping. So probably about there is nice. Okay. Is that not, oh, perspective mode. 
Um, so if you go into orthographic mode, which is number five. Okay, let's just zoom in. If you, yeah, you find like if you, if you go into perspective like that, it's sort of creep in and creep in and creep in. You can't get any closer. You want to go into orthographic. And if you press period, then it zooms you in onto the where you're working. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So I've left a little bit of a gap there, um, but it's worth just quickly checking these. And make sure you've got nothing overlapping. As you can see here, this one looked close. Um, if it is, just make sure you're in like front view, and then you're only working in this plane. And just G grab it, move it around. Okay or gg to edge slide it all right but that's okay so you're not going to be able to get much beveling on these because there's not much space um if you wanted to do proper beveling then you're done but come back to the, anyway so we'll just do the easy ones first we'll come back to the e so just highlight one of the vertices control l fill okay look where one of the um small points is uh, probably here inset see that's what happens when it overlaps you can't let me just oh, actually let me just do that one wrong i don't know well, but if 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 it basically if it is, it's no big deal. I mean, you can obviously just control Z, or if you can, you can just go in the G, just grab them out of the way. Okay, they're just overlapping, and so it doesn't overlap anymore. But just keep an eye on it when you're doing it; it's easier. And so hold down Shift, it gives you a smaller, a bit more control. There, see those two are overlapping. Let's check you haven't missed anything. Okay, probably getting a bit close there. I'm just going to grab that out just to make sure. Let's look okay. Then this one, control L, fill. That's probably the narrowest point at the top. Inset. Yeah, probably about there. Okay. Um, right, so onto the E, control L, joins everything. As you see, it hasn't picked up the one in the middle. If I down shift, control. Well, okay, so if you hit F now, it's just going to put like a face all over because no, you have to split it up a little bit for it. Okay, so you can do this sort of where it's got this sort of inset shape, the minimum you need is like two sort of edges. So I'm just going to put an edge there, and I'll put one here. Okay, and then I'm going to swap over to um, edge select mode uh, so that we can just get the edges, um, otherwise, it gets confused. Uh, see. Let's right, do these ones first. I put them in the right place. No. No, let's see. See what happens. May or may not work. This may just fill it in again. inept or well, perhaps I have. Yeah. there we go okay and then you can highlight all of it so just do control L and just the inset will sort itself out cool okay so we've now got like a sort of nice like edge loop um, protective thing. The reason we're doing this is because this gets triangulated, and we're going to put like a bevel on it. Um, and if there's, if if you put the bevel on it when you've got triangles got hitting up to the edge, it just looks horrible and goes wrong. So I'm going to select everything, and then extrude backwards on the y-axis. Okay, it's gone black, so the um, all the normals are screwed up. So hit A, Control N. Okay, and you see it's gone light now. So the normals are the right around, which is good. Okay, so now in edge select, I'm going to select all the sharp edges and put like a bevel on. I like to do it with a modifier, and you can go back and fiddle with it later if you want to. So you can select the sharp edges. Okay, so it's picked up all the edges. Otherwise, you have to be really careful because it picks up all these and it'll go wrong. Um, then we're going to do a bevel it. Probably, and we're put use bevel weight because this is non-destructive. Um, so if you see in the bottom corner here, it says bevel weight plus one. All right, so they've gone bright orange, just shows that they're beveled. Now, if you ever want to take bevel weight off, all right, it's took me ages to, to work out. Just do Control E, uh, bevel weight, and just type in minus one. Okay, and it will go. 
Right. Maybe that won't do that. So that's got a bit of weight on it. Um, if you go into vertex mode, you won't see all the annoying yellow. Um, yeah, that's good. So now we're going to add a modifier um, for that. Yeah, you can add it in, in that mode as well, but it's in here. So, uh, modifier level. Okay, um, so to start with, that's good. it just does everything. Um, so if you change it over to weight, okay. And um, then all it does is just do the edges. You only see an awful lot. Um, I just leave it at one segment on this because you've not got a lot of space there. Um, I'm going to flip it over to cycles because I'm used to using cycles rather than blender render. I wonder why it's so dark. Um, so if you, what you'll notice is if you whack the um, the width up here, okay, it won't do an awful lot. Right? It's because you've got clamp override on. So the clamp override stops it bashing into each other but because you've got very little space here anyway, the reality is you can't fit a lot of um, extra vertices and stuff in. So if you turn it off, okay, yeah. And then you can show you what you can do. Okay, so if 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 this text wasn't so detailed, right, you could get a bigger bevel in there, um, but you just can't. And so even like that, okay, it's going to be overlapping because you saw how these little ones overlap. So when it gets applied, it overlaps. Just leave clamp override on. You don't. It doesn't look like it does an awful lot, but it makes a big difference when it goes in. Okay, um, so let's just see what this is looking like now. So we're looking at um, rendered. Oh, I'm setting thing up. Let's just quickly. Um, let's have a bit of background. So this is a, a default. Render. It's kind of cool. Um, just give it a bit more extra light. Okay, it's actually not looking too bad. Okay, you can smooth that as well. Um, and then hit film. Oh, see, when you smooth it, you'll see you've got issues with the shading here. So you've got this dark spots um, on here. So there's a way to fix that. So the beveling sorted out the shading on the edges um, and it's giving you like your specular highlights on the edges. The way to sort of just stick a couple of edge loops in just to support that shading. You can see it fixes it as they go in. Okay. And because of how we've done this, it means we've got like a nice bit of control over this. Yeah, so if you wanted to sort of deconstruct these a bit more and subsurf it and everything, you could do all sorts of fun things with them. And um, at least it's just means you've got control over what you're doing. Okay, that looks nicer. Rendered. Cool. Okay, it's looking quite nice. So I'm just going to UV unwrap it as well. I mean, it's, so I'm just going to do like a simple UV unwrap. Um, and then we'll stick a, an image on it as well. So let's, uh, no, let's get UV to do that. So just going to edit mode. Okay, I'm going to highlight everything, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to un unwrap like the the front of the text, and then whatever image will do, just stretch back because that looks kind of fun. Um, yeah, it's not a tutorial about UV unwrapping. Um, so I'm just going to do uh, actually let's get an image in first. Uh, film. Okay, that's handy. So I'm just going to unwrap. Uh, project from view okay and you can use the same controls in here so I'm just going to um, control L to link it I'll stick it somewhere so it looks nice okay and all right so I won't have actually done anything yet um, because we haven't put any material on it, so I'm just going to put like a quick material on. Um, I usually obviously do this in multiple screens, but I'll keep all on one screen for this. Uh, let's do nodes, it's more fun. Hey? Okay, so that's just a default um, white texture. Okay, so we've unwrapped it. So texture coordinates, UV, texture, image texture. 
Okay, and tell it where the UV is unwrapped to, and then we're kind of just going to put it into a diffuse, um, and then we've already loaded the logo. Uh, so in the material view, should be on there now. Rendered, job done. Hey, yeah, that's quite cool. Okay, so it stretches through. That's all done. So. Uh, yeah, so that looks nice. That's ready to go. So you can't get any extreme beveling doing it like this. If you want to do that, then that's another tutorial altogether. Um, and, but you have to be sensible with the text. Cause obviously, if you bevel it there, you know, you're going to lose the form anyway. So yeah, it's, you've got expecting a lot if you want that. Um, so let's export this. Now, from Cycles, it doesn't necessarily link the material, so we have to relink it. But it's no big deal for this. Um, so, so file, export. Um, make sure you've got what you want exported. Okay. Into the ABG file, so I do selection only down here, and then triangular faces. Got a few problems with it from free with it not doing what you should with the quads, as far as I can see. Um, triangular faces, uh, call that text. Okay, let's part pit film. Should put, yeah, it's worth bumping the anti alias up actually for this. Um, just looks nicer. Uh, oh, I've got my screen in the other. Oh, goodness, how do I do this? Uh, there we go. Okay, so uh, import 3D model text. Oh, this comes as a text file because I was. Um, Looks like it's it's not really obviously it's no BG. I was just looking at a notepad earlier because I'm geeky like that. There we go. Looks pretty sweet. So we need to relink the material. There's no biggie. Nice. Looks nice. No issues. Okay. Let's drop that in the composite shot. Go over uh, 3D, chuck a light in it. Yeah. There you go. Looks nice. Uh, the ATA this takes the edge off there, you see, it makes quite a big difference. Just tidies it up nicely. So it's worth banging on as much anti alias as you can. Um, yeah, there you go job done so that's one way of doing it there's loads of others um, yeah but that works yeah, it looks like a bit of a faff once you've done it a few times it's not that bad um, yeah and you're not doing it all the time um, and that's probably quite a good example because this say you, you can get away a murder with the blockier text um, because you don't get the stuff overlapping so that's why I did it with a slightly finer one because um, you've got some issues so yeah hope that's of help and uh, yeah, enjoy your, your hit film and, and blendering cheers